Let's take a look at the driving plates workflows that Disguise has and how these can be used in a virtual production context. So I have some driving plate shot content here delivered from our friends at drivingplates.com. And uh, this is a plate that was delivered as individual uh, shot pieces for all the different um, cameras. So you can see I've got um, a perspective here from the front of the car and then sides and top and so on. Um, and these are been delivered as individual plates, so a totally unstitched uh, piece of content. And what we've done inside Disguise is rigged up a number of cameras to emulate the camera array that the driving plates were actually shot from. So each of those cameras, for example, camera one, faces forwards from the car and therefore has a similar perspective and similar camera properties than the actual original camera that uh, was used to shoot the plate. Then inside the video layers, we have created a perspective map that is attached to that camera, matches the resolution of the shot plate and has a small gradient on the edge as a mask, which by the way, you can create inside the soft edge editor by setting alpha gradient on the alpha mode. And the end result is that we can actually stitch these cameras inside disguise. Now it won't be a perfect stitch. Perfect stitch would require us to, uh, to sort of lens distort and warp and, and so on, but it gets you a large amount of the way there, particularly if you're doing close up shots and things like that from within the car. So you can see, for example, here, if I place, you know, a nice shot inside the car that we can recreate a really nice looking aesthetic and pretty much not see any any edge artifacts uh, in the shot as uh, as the sequence runs. If I just run that sequence there, I've got you know really nice looking content running out on the LED wall. And uh, the cool thing is that this camera array has also been set up to be completely dynamic. So I can um, I can move the car or and the array to change which bit of the LED volume we're shooting on. And this is a really important part of the workflow because you need to decide which bit of the LED volume, if you have, say, a curved wall like this, which bit of the volume do you want uh, the car to actually be relative to? So I set this up with a parent uh, object, and that parent object is the parent of both the car and the camera rig, so they're all children here. And you can see I can uh, I can change where my car is within the volume, and uh, and therefore you know tweak exactly which uh, which bit of the volume gets the content reprojected onto it. So if we were doing a backwards facing shot, um, looking into the car, and we wanted to um, to see nice content out of the back window, for example, while uh, somebody's driving along, maybe a shot like this, then. I can do that in the same volume. And if we continue playing the plate from there, you'll see that the car will pick up and start driving. So this is a really neat workflow. And this is a way of as, uh, as having total control of the, the stage using the camera system inside disguise and reprojecting the content. Of course, you need to be a little bit conscious of file sizes. You know, these unstitched plates are, are pretty sizable pieces of content and you're playing more video when you're doing this than a, than a stitched plate. Um, but it is a workflow and an option and something that Disguise enables. Now, if you are delivered a stitched plate, then we can also handle those. So this uh, content here is a stitched that long. Let's go to maybe a little bit later in the sequence where there's a bit more light. And I've got both the front and rear of the car uh, delivered as separate stitches. And then those are attached to spherical maps. So we've got this spherical map that lives within the stage. And again, I can uh, move exactly where that is to change the reprojection center and choose how the content is going to sit within the volume. Um, and that is with the defined arc values that match the content and the resolution of the stitch. And then I can have a totally stitched plate playing out inside this environment as well. 
So whether you have stitched driving plates or raw plates that you want to stitch within the disguise environment um, just to get something going, this is a really powerful workflow to get you there. I've also set up with these pieces of content the full ASIS color management to match the cameras they were shot uh, with, so different input transforms and then um, output transforms to match my LED processor configurations. And you can see the results are pretty cool. So I hope you like all these workflows. Um, very interesting to see what everyone creates with these. Let us know if you've got questions.